Hey dad, you know what will be a great new year resolution? You could try to get in better shape. You know, you could start eating more vegetables for your kidneys. A 61-year-old dad decided to improve their health. He started following a better diet full of veggies. He was never eating before such as spinach, potatoes, beets, rhubarb, and more. This is what happened to his kidneys. CM is a 61-year-old businessman and father of three, presenting to the emergency department of the Health Adventist Medical Center in Bolingbroke, Chicago, with severe shortness of breath and weakness. He is on a wheelchair because he can't support his own weight anymore and he is gasping for air. They will later found out that his creatinine was very high at 15.11 mg per dl, meaning that he was suffering from acute kidney injury and he was in need of emergency dialysis. His son explains to the admitting nurse that just a few weeks earlier, he convinced his father to start eating vegetables. Is this all my fault? The son asked the nurse, but the nurse shrugged off that hypothesis. Vegetables don't cause kidney damage. Or do they? Wait, wait, wait. What? Gather in here. Welcome today to a new real story from the emergency room. As usual, this patient's story is based on a real case report which was published in the World Journal of Nephrology and Neurology in March 2020. But today's case is special to me and, well, today's case also comes with a warning. Things are not always what they look like in a medical mystery like this one. What caused a CM problem is still being studied today by medical science. This is a type of kidney damage that doesn't happen very often, just in about 12 patients in the last decades. And if you think this is interesting, remember to share this video so other people can enjoy it too. But don't get to a conclusion about what happened to CM before seeing how it actually ends. Because you see, before being hospitalized, CM was suffering from diabetes and gout, but his kidneys were okay. He was taking metformin for his diabetes, statins for his cholesterol and allopurinol for gout. But CM never really paid any attention to his own health. His job and his family always took priority in his life. Nothing else really mattered, his own health included. He would very frequently binge on peanut butter by eating up to half a jar in a single sitting. And he was also used to drink three, four large cups of coffee daily. But this year, it was going to be different. CM promised to his younger son and he took his new year resolution pretty seriously. A promise to his own son wasn't something he was going to forget and he decided to start immediately getting better by adding more vegetables to his diet. But that's when things started to go south for him. After one month of his new improved diet, his legs started to swell. He never suffered from swelling before, but he didn't really have the time to pay attention to that symptom. He had too much work to do that week. After two months of his vegetable-rich diet, he woke up one morning so tired he was barely able to get up from his bed. He had to call in sick at work for the first time in years. Even his secretary was dumbfounded and worried. CM was never sick and he was always working. He eventually did get up from his bed just to go to the bathroom. What happened next really scared him. There was something red in his urine. And he also noticed for the first time that he was breathing way faster than what he was used to. What is happening to me, he thought. Should I be booking an appointment with my doctor? Or are you supposed to call an ambulance if you see red in your urine? But there was no more time now. Going back to bed, CM head started to spin so fast he lost his balance and fell to the ground. He was barely able to reach his phone and to call for an ambulance. When CM was brought to the emergency department, he was found to have suffered severe acute kidney injury. His kidneys were not working anymore 
and that was causing all the symptoms swelling, fatigue, hematuria, even his inability to breathe and to sustain his own weight. Something was destroying his kidneys and it was not diabetes because, well, it was way too fast to be diabetes. You see, before being hospitalized, CM creatinine was just 1.6 mg per dl, just slightly high, not even high enough to be considered kidney disease. His diabetes was being treated and he had no family history of renal disease, kidney stones or any gastrointestinal disorders. His creatinine was now 15.11, however, and his GFR was down to 2.8. His kidneys weren't working anymore. But why? What was causing all that damage to his kidneys? After the first dialysis session, CM was lucid enough to help the doctors finding a diagnosis. He confirmed that he was still taking his diabetes medications and he also denied any consumption of dangerous substances. He wasn't even taking NSAIDs or antibiotics known to cause damage. He told the doctors he was never exposed to anything dangerous for his kidneys like contrast media in an MRI. Nothing made sense and the doctors were confused. But you know, CM kidneys weren't being destroyed by an alien force or an ancient course. There must have been a medical explanation for what was happening. Maybe a renal ultrasound was going to give the doctors the answer they needed? It was the third day of CM hospitalization now and the renal ultrasound was completely unremarkable. Just one more thing to do now, a renal biopsy. A renal biopsy is a medical procedure in which a small piece of kidney is removed from the body for examination, usually under a microscope. It's a way to actually see what's going on in the kidneys. This time, what the doctors found out in CM kidneys was so remarkable. They actually wrote and published an article about this finding. Now, what are we looking at? Here you can see fibrosis in CM's nephrons. Fibrosis is a term that indicates that the tissue in the nephrons, the tiny filtering units in the kidneys, is being damaged. Fibrosis means thickening or scarring of the tissue. And here's the cause of the damage. These bright spots you see here are calcium oxalate crystals in CM's renal tubules. Now, calcium oxalate crystals are the most common cause of kidney stones. These are hard clumps of materials that are tearing through CM's nephrons and tubules, destroying his kidney function. Now, this brings us to an even bigger medical mystery. How is it possible that a man with no history of kidney stones nor risk factors completely lost his kidney function at 61 years old due to oxalate crystals. There are various known mechanisms that can cause oxalate crystals to form, a surgery or a disease that causes increased absorption of oxalate, but CM didn't have any disease or surgery that would cause oxalate problems. A very high intake of vitamin C, like what happened in one of the case studies we have already seen up here, is also a cause, but CM wasn't supplementing any vitamin C. A dietary deficiency of calcium, magnesium, or water intake may also cause oxalate crystals. So now CM is being questioned about his diet. He said he was always drinking lots of water, but admitted to a diet that was consistently heavy in nuts and coffee and in many vegetables rich in oxalates such as rhubarb and beets and spinach and all that good stuff. But he also claimed to consume enough calcium by eating cheese and yogurt almost every day. So having oxalate crystals shouldn't have been possible for him. And yet, here we are. And you see a case of kidney damage caused by oxalate crystals in absence of any of these risk factors is incredibly rare. It only happened around a dozen times in medical literature and it's, uh, well, worth publishing a paper about it. Almost time to see if CM was eventually able to make it home safe or if he was going to have to do dialysis for the rest of his life. Before that, a very important question I'm sure many of you guys are thinking about now. Are oxalate rich foods dangerous for those with chronic kidney disease? Foods known to be highest in oxalate include spinach, rhubarb, beets, 
legumes, nuts, chocolate and coffee. And these are all very healthy for you, coffee and chocolate included. And while it's not recommended to consume coffee and peanut butter in the amounts CM was consuming, they could be part of a healthy diet. But CM's diet was what caused his kidney to fail in a very short amount of time. Can that happen to other people too? Well, that's unlikely for most people, kidney patients included. You see, bacteria in your gut will break down oxalates before they can cause you trouble. Dietary calcium is also going to prevent oxalate from crystallizing in the kidneys. And while many calcium-rich foods are to be avoided in a renal diet, taking toms and tacids that are made of calcium carbonate is both a way to keep phosphorus levels down and to prevent any risk correlated to oxalate. Now, there are people that must pay attention to oxalate-rich foods, however, those prone to kidney stones. If you had kidney stones in the past, you are more likely to get them again. And if they are calcium oxalate stones, the most common type limiting oxalate will be a good strategy. People who have had gastric bypass surgery or surgeries that affect how the gut works may also have high oxalate levels in their urine. So if you have gut dysfunction or take antibiotics, you may want to eat a low oxalate diet. Now also those that have to limit their water intake due to kidney disease may be recommended to follow a low oxalate diet. But for most people, the benefits of nutrient dense high oxalate foods far outweigh their risks. And well, CM didn't have any of these risk factors for kidney stones as we have seen. So how is it possible that he had oxalate crystals in his kidneys? Researchers were only able to find one explanation for this incredibly rare phenomenon, a rare genetic mutation involving craparin protein which could have caused inflammatory problems. I'm not getting too much in depth about this, but it was actually only observed in mice before CM's case. CM problem was also linked to gout, so this paper also tells us that there may be a link between gout and kidney damage caused by oxalate. Okay guys, do you want to see how it ends? Let's see if CM was eventually able to make it home safe. After his hospitalization, CM was started on dialysis. After three weeks on dialysis in the hospital, CM gained back a little bit of kidney function. Unfortunately, when he left the hospital, his kidney function was still too low for him to be dialysis free, but not all hope was lost. You see, CM never had chronic kidney disease and by completely stopping what was causing damage to his kidneys, there is hope for him to get enough kidney function back. CM was also instructed about his rare condition and told to avoid oxalate-rich foods. Now guys, I'm glad I talked about oxalate and the risk connected to what some call an anti-nutrient because as we have seen, some kidney patients should actually limit their intake of this substance. Let me know if you want to know more about how to avoid the risks connected to oxalate in a future video. And in case you wanted to see more real medical mysteries like this one, this video up here may be interesting. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.